Hello and welcome to Cran Talk Art Pottery Studio. As Christmas is drawing near, I thought it might be quite nice to do some Christmassy type things for the difference. So, as I like animals, we're going to do some robins. Nice little fat ones like this. These are, of course, European robins. American robins being quite different. Robins in the UK tend to have a um, sort of a myth associated with them, if you like, in that if a robin comes to visit you, then it's a spirit of a loved one. Come back to make sure you're okay. But apart from that, they're also very uh, synonymous with Christmas here in the UK. So to make one of these little fellas, you're going to need some clay. And I've measured out three lumps of clay, 250 grams, that's going to be the body, 50 grams is going to be the head, and 30 grams is going to be the tail, and a bit of spare clay for modelling. You're also going to need a knife, something to smooth your bird down with. I'm going to use a rubber kidney. Credit cards can be used or backs of spoons, those sorts of things, but I'm going to use this one and my fingers. A glass of water, which you'll find useful for washing the worst of the clay off your fingers, and some slip to stick it all together with. So to start with, I'm going to make basically what's known as a um, pottery egg pitch pot egg so I'm going to break this clay into two halves roll it into a ball each side and then make a pinch pot now if you're not very good at pinch pots the trick is put your thumb in until you can feel it so you have a mushroom on your thumb and then coax the clay back so your thumb stays still and your fingers stroke it back like that and that way you'll keep it going straight up rather than spreading out so you're simply pushing against your thumb and what you want to do is to make two little pots. Like that. That's one. And do the same with the other half of the piece of clay. Thumb in. Stroke it again with my fingers. Bring it back against, pushing it against my thumb. Try not to make it too thin in any one place. I've got it quite thin there at the bottom, so I'm just going to stroke some of the clay back just to strengthen it up. The aim with the, whenever you're making a pinch pot is to try and get it even all the way. So feel the clay, feel where it's thick, where it's thin, shape it out. But don't let it spread out. You want this little pot. When you've got two pots, which hopefully are about the same size, you get your knife, you cross hatch where you're going to join them together. If your clay is a little firm, I would be tempted to cross hatch both sides. I'm afraid a Tiggy our pottery cat has been adding fur to the proceedings. So just get that out of the way. When you've cross hatched both sides, a good coating of slip on it all the way around. That and join the two pieces together. Now, you may find, like me, that there's a lot of holes and gaps because it's not flat and even on the top. Try to arrange it so that it sort of goes together as best as you can, and then squeeze the two together. Now that's not gonna hold itself, so the next thing we need to do is add a bit of more clay to make a joint. So I'm gonna roll out a worm of clay, and then where I've got enough clay to smooth it over, I will. Where there's bigger gaps, I'll put my worm of clay in and then spread it up one side, spread it down the other. So we're spreading it across the join to strengthen the pot. It doesn't matter if it's a bit rough at this point, because we're going to sort that out in a minute. If you've got any particular holes that you think you need a bit more clay, don't be afraid to get another little bit and just put it in. So I now have this very uneven, rough looking egg. So the first thing to do with it is to try and make it round. So get it in your hand and just roll it round and round, squeeze it, shape it, so it becomes a little bit more like a ball, like that. Okay, now it's still very rough. So what I do at this point is I bring in a bowl. This is a little Ikea bowl, but it could be any bowl. It doesn't need to be quite as nicely round as this. A cereal bowl will do just fine. 
and we're going to use this to help to shape the ball. So I'm going to put the ball in and I'm just going to roll it around in there. I can put a quite a bit of pressure on this egg that I'm working on because it's basically a balloon now. As long as it's sealed and the air can't get out, then the air will push back as we try to smooth it down. So I can roll it round and round. You see it's starting to get a bit smoother, a, bit, a little bit less lumpy. This isn't going to get all of it out, and if you're not careful, you also get lines from around the edge as well. So, But it will get it well on its way. There we go. So, already starting to look a lot better. Then I'm going to take my rubber kidney. And the trick to using a rubber kidney is, is to come in gently. So don't start off too firm. Come in really gently and then put pressure on. That way you will avoid getting those sort of line marks you get when you're trying to master using a kidney. Again, I'm trying to get as much of the unevenness out as I possibly can using the kidney. But there'll be spots like that there where what I might need to do is just rub it with my finger, smooth it out. If you find you've got a lump that you really can't get smoothed out for whatever reason, don't be afraid to put a bit of slip on it, add a little bit of extra clay, get it as smooth as you can. All the time it's getting a little bit smoother, a little bit smoother as we keep working it. Right. Next, I'm going to grab a towel, <coughs> dip my fingers in the water. My partner, if she watches this, will be horrified. She'll be going, what do you mean? You've got a glass of water and you haven't drunk it. This is just washing my fingers in. Um, I don't want my fingers wet, so that's why I get the towel, just to dry them. But I do want them very slightly damp and I want them clean. If they're not clean, you're just going to start rubbing clay dust in, which is not going to smooth anything at all. And this is where you can start to go over, where you can start to go over bits that just don't seem to want to smooth out and work in a circular motion. Almost sort of massaging the clay to get it smooth. Now you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want. If you want your robin to look really rustic, you don't need to worry too much. If you want it to look really, really smooth and perfect, you could spend hours and hours doing this. I want something in between. I just want to make sure I've got all the major cracks and things out. So I've got a nice, smooth, round looking ball. I've got a crack there, so I'll just work that out. A little bit of water, dry my finger. Make sure my fingers clean. Work it out. Some people are tempted to sort of get a sponge and wipe it over with a sponge, thinking that will smooth it. Well, it will to a certain degree, but it will also wash out the clay, which means that after firing, you might find that your piece is actually not as smooth as you expect. So we now have a round ball. So this is the sort of thing you can keep looking at for hours and go, oh, I missed a bit. You do have to reach a point where you have to go, right, now it's time to step away from the clay. So I'm going to stop there for this fella. So I have a body. Now I need a head. So I take my 50 gram lump of clay, roll it into a ball, and I'm going to make this into a little pinch pot. So I just put my thumb in, make a little hat, and just shape it a little bit. I don't want to make it too thin. I want to make it into that sort of little shape. About the size of an egg cup for an acorn, really. Then I get my bowl again, and I'm going to use the bowl just to roll it around in the bowl, just to help smooth it out a bit. Okay. And then we're ready to attach the head. Now the thing about robins is they don't have much of a neck, so I'm not worried about putting a neck. The head is going to go straight onto the body, but very, very important, you have an air pocket in there, and if you don't put a, a, some way for the air to vent from the air pocket there into the main body and out the other end 
this is going to blow off. So before you put it on, always make sure you put a hole in and then blow in it, now blow across in it. It should be like blowing across the top of a bottle. If you've gone through fully, you should hear a bit of an echo. So, yeah, so that's gone right through. So then, again, like I did the body, we ruffle this up. Let's get the scoring. We get the knife. Do that, and then we get a nice bit of slip and decide which way around to put the head. Now, in this case, I, I like to put the bit that's, if you like, the straightest, that's going to be at the front, and the bit that slopes a bit more is going to go at the back. I haven't done that deliberately, that's just the way that my pinch pot has gone. If your pinch pot hasn't done that, don't panic. Just choose which side you think should be the front of the head. And then we put it on. So we press that down. Be careful at this point, you've, because you've burst your bubble, basically, so until it's sealed, you will continue to lose air. So don't be too rough on it. Get my little bit of rough clay here. Again, I'm going to make a little worm, like I did for the body. Oop, my slip is particularly slippy. I'm going to paint my worm. I could paint the head, but I'm likely to get its slip everywhere because it's a bit particularly wet at the moment. I'll put that round, starting at the back. And again, just like the body, smooth it up, smooth it down all the way round. European robins are rather weird little birds. They are one of our shortest lived British birds, mainly due to stress. They are incredibly territorial. If you see two robins together, it'll be a male and a female because the females are exactly the same colour as the male, which does make it a little tricky. But if another bird comes into their territory, even to visit a bird table, they will chase it off. Which is why if you're ever making a bird table, don't put a robin on it as a ceramic robin because they will see that as being a threat to their territory and they'll spend all their time trying to fight it. Sometimes they get so carried away in the summer and breeding time that they'll start attacking car mirrors because they've seen another robin and they feel they have to chase it off. Of course, the robin won't leave. Sometimes they will get so aggressive they'll actually end up injuring themselves on the car mirror. Right, so we'll smooth that all down. So if we've already smoothed the body down a lot, then this makes it a lot easier to get this nice and smooth. So I have what started to look a bit like a skittle, but a very fat, dumpy one. So next, we take the 30 gram lump of clay. This is going to be the tail. They have these little tails on the back, mainly to so you know which ends which, to stop them moving around and rolling around too much as well. So we roll it into a little fat sausage like that. We flatten it out. Not too flat, make it nice and thick and chunky. But we want it about two centimetres long. Again, get it nice and smooth while you can. Nice and fat at the end there. So you're aiming for that sort of shape. So that's the going to be the bottom of the tail. That's going to be the bit against the body. So I then get my knife, score it. Nice lump of gooey slip on it. Whoop! Splatter that everywhere. Decide on which is the back of your robin. And so let's see. For this robin, I'm going to have it here. There's no definitive thing about that. I just arbitrarily decided that that's going to be the back of my robin. So put that on. Then to make sure it stays on, get, and again, another little worm of clay in the slip around the back. Again, work it in. All the way, the sides and the bottom. And then need to fix it underneath as well. So again, we get that little worm of clay, a bit of slip, put it in place, work it up like that, down like that. There we go. And then 
and smooth it in as much or as little as you want. Just make sure it's nice and straight. Got a nice little tail there. We sit him down and we can sit the tail down as well and that will help to keep him stable. Next thing, he's going to need a beak and some eyes. I'm just going to, before I put any of this on, I want to get it as smooth as I can because it gets quite tricky to smooth it from that point onwards. So again, I'm just going to go over it with a kidney. Make sure it's nice and ready. And once you start sticking things like beaks and eyes on, it gets harder to smooth the face because they're going to be in the way. Oop, I've got a lump there, I'll get rid of so I'll just smooth that with. Two wet. Get that in. Like that. Okay, so this is where I decide how cheeky my robin is going to look. So I make a beak, just a tiny little bit of clay, about the size of a large pea. They don't have very big beaks. In fact, some of the ones I made earlier, the beaks are going to be shortened before we're done. So I make like a little cone, like that out of it. And then we decide where my robin's going to be looking. So he could be looking up, he could be looking down. So I'd have his beak down there and he could be looking down at the ground. Or I could have his beak further up, like he's looking up at the sky. I could have it over the side, so he's looking over his shoulder. So what's, let's see, what shall we do with this one? I think we will have him looking a little bit quizzically. So I'm going to have his beak sort of there. I'll put some slip on it. Put it on. And then smooth it down. And if you haven't got enough clay to be able to smooth it down, get a little bit of sausage of clay. If you're struggling to get your fingers in, I always find it useful to use the back of the knife as well. Just to smooth it in. Put it on all the way around. Maybe shape it a bit. As I say, this beaks, my beaks are getting a bit long. If I turn it up like that, it turns into a duck. So definitely need to lose a bit of beak. Snip a bit off. Squeeze it and shape it into a little beak. Coming along, I'm not quite there yet though. Last thing he's going to need is some eyes. So, what I do, I always make my eyes together. So, I get a little lump of clay. This is going to be about the size of a pea again. Maybe this time more of a standard garden pea. And that might even be a little bit too big. So, um, yeah, I think I'll be, I'll be all right. We'll see. So, I get this pea, I roll it. Get it as smooth as I can. I get my knife and I try and cut the pea in half. Like that. As close to it as possible. Then I roll those two pea, two half peas into balls again. And at this point as well, once I've done that, get another palm of my hand, give it a good roll. Like that. And I make sure they're about the same size, which they are on this occasion, which is good. Then we get the, the eyes. I'm just going to dip them into the slip. So they come out nice and gooey. Then get the bird and you look at him straight on so that his beak is pointing directly towards your nose. And the eyes go on about halfway down the head, well, about a quarter, a quarter a third of the way down the head. There, you get one eye on. And then for the second eye, again, look at, get him to look straight at you. Put the eye in the position you think it should be. And then just look down on it from above to make sure that it's, it's straight that way as well as that way. And then press it down. Make sure they're on good and tight. Again, just check him at the end. Make sure his eyes are level. Can look at him again. But then... Last bit of smoothing. And one last job to do before this one's ready to be put for firing is don't forget to put the air vent. So on the underside here, I'm going to get my knife. 
I'm going to put it in, twirl it around, make sure it goes right into the body. Give it a blow, yeah, that's right through. And there we have a Christmas robin.